Hi everybody, Stefan Kesting from grapplers.com here. Today, I've got my good friend and training partner, Richie Yip, and we're gonna be talking about new jiu-jitsu people, newbies. And, you know, given this is a second interview that we did, we did a podcast yeah, interview. Yeah, it was great, it was awesome. I love talking about myself. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> let's do one of these every day. Okay, <laughs> Stefan, let's do it. Joe Rogan, eat your heart out. <laughs> That's right. Richie talking about himself again? For, for another yeah. three hours. <laughs> but it's, it's funny. I mean, given how much time we spend together and how much time we spend talking about jiu-jitsu yeah, together yeah. and other aspects of life that we've only ever done one formal interview, it, it seems like a, an omission that we should we should correct. So Yeah. Um, and and uh, I love getting my picture taken mm-hmm. and I, I love being on camera and we should just have this... Uh, we should have this camera guy follow us around everywhere. Yeah, pretty you much. Know? It'd be like yeah. a reality show. Yeah, we should have our own reality show. That's great. Perfect. Well, putting that plan aside... <laughs> okay, just, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, a moment. On the back burner. Yeah. On the back burner. Yeah, on the, uh, the list of good ideas that maybe one day will pursue. Uh, here's a question I got asked recently, and it, it, it's interesting because it ties in with some historical aspects of mm-hmm. jiu-jitsu. Do you think that you should have separate classes for beginners, intermediate, and advanced students. You know, like a, yeah, a 101, yeah, 201, 301 type of setup? Yeah. Or do you think that it should just be one giant well, uh, free-for-all? Yeah, that's a, it's, it's, well, it's a great question. It's a great question. And immediately, the way that we do it uh, at our schools is that um, largely it's, it's, a, uh, it's a free-for-all. Uh, even our beginners classes are pretty advanced, right? So um, the thing is, is that... Um, a lot of our marketing, uh, uh, it, 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 it markets to the beginner, right? And the thing is, is that um, somebody new to jiu-jitsu, like, so somebody who's looking for jiu-jitsu classes, like, right away, they're thinking, like, well, I want to go to a class where there's only white belts. Because they're right? intimidated by... I think they're, because they're, they're intimidated. Um, they are, they're, they're worried about being um, uh, just like a walking heavy bag. Right for for, for, for for somebody who's much heavier, much stronger, much more technical, they don't want to be. Which uh, happens at a lot of schools. Oh, certainly, absolutely. Which is a real fear, I think, Stefan. It's 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 it's, it's a uh, um, uh, certainly a fear that I had. And um, um, the thing is, is that I also think it's sort of like the uh, the traditional school model in the sense that there's a grade one, a grade two, and you know, in order to go into grade three, you have to complete grade two, right? Um, in 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 jujitsu, I think. First off, if you go and you, you check out a school, in my belief, what you want to do is you want to see that the school has not only white belts, but that they have uh, brown belts or purple belts, and that uh, um, there's people who are tiny, and then they have big people, and they have skinny people, and people of all sizes, right? And I think that demonstrates clearly um, a very strong and rich and healthy school environment. Because imagine if you walked into a school, Stefan, and there was just white belts, and the instructor has been teaching martial arts for 10 years, and they've been in this location for 10 years. Forget the seven-year itch, the seven-month. Yeah, yeah, oh, exactly. Seven-month people mean? pulling the, the rip cord Oh, oh after, for sure, uh, absolutely, because it's, 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 this, it's, just, uh, it's just a revolving, revolving door, door uh, of, of students. Or if you walk into a school, and it's all higher belts, right? Well, then what happens? Right then, it it becomes a all all the, all, the, all the newbies just become like just rag dolls, right? Just 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 walking heavy bags for all the senior students, right? And uh, I think that's I think it's really really problematic. And um, to really show a sense of of, of richness and, and a community, because you're really when you're joining a school, stuff, and you're joining a community, yeah. right? Like um, uh, you you really want to uh, you want to Feel it. You want to see it. You want to showcase it, right? And and um, uh, I, and a lot of I think a lot of newbies are expecting like only a white belt class. Now I can argue that that's a good thing. I can argue, also argue that's a good thing, but uh, I think there's a lot of benefits from uh, training in a very diverse community, right? And one of the one of the key features is is that I think that. For me, one of the one of the I think one of the keystone experiences for me when I was just starting jujitsu was training with somebody who was much smaller than me, and they were able to go and and tap me out and kick your ass. Yeah, oh, totally. Even though mm-hmm. it was, it, it didn't make sense. It was like they were def- defying the laws of physics, right? Like I'm, 
I'm younger than you. I'm taller than you. I'm more, you know, like I, I should be able to. Well, almost everyone is less muscular than you. So. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely. There's, there's, um, there's full size photos <laughs> available <laughs> in the link. No, just, Five no, by no, ten. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I got a stack of these things. Can't get rid of them. Anyways, um, so there's, there's, uh, there was this. It just defied. The, the, like it, it was like they it was like the, I was it was as if I saw a human being levitate mm -hmm. you know like it just blew my mind and I think that's an important experience I think that's an experience that everybody should go through right away right away as soon as they as soon as they can go into a group class train feel comfortable befriend a smaller <laughs> higher belt and then have them kick your ass and I think it's a great experience because right away it is just like okay. Now this is jujitsu. They're experiencing jujitsu because if, if I mean when 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 you roll with somebody who's just bigger than you, right? It's like okay, well you can rationalize that. You can rationalize that. Yeah, you're just bigger than me. You're muscling muscling me, mm -hmm. right? But you it, don't. And when you're starting, you don't even have enough uh, vocabulary yet to just to recognize technique when you see yeah, it. That absolutely. big guy might be using one tenth of his t strength. Sure. And completely defeating you with technique right. but you have absolutely. no idea absolutely because because the thing is is that leverage when applied properly offers feels uh, like feels like strength mm -hmm. it, it is the illusion of strength right and the same thing with with weight displacement it feels like man this person is so heavy but then you look at them and then it's like oh you're like 150 pounds you're, you're you're 50 pounds lighter than me mm -hmm. right or whatever and i think what that does is that run away one it validates the reason why you're in the class is because you want to learn yeah. jujitsu. You're not trying to get stronger, right? Like this is this is it's, it's it, this isn't a CrossFit gym, mm -hmm. right? You are you are learn, there to learn technique. And when you roll with somebody who is lighter than you, then that becomes reinforced. And as well, if you roll with somebody, let's just say that uh, uh, um, if like like back when you were a white belt and you were rolling with other white belts. Why were you more dominant? It was probably because of your size and your strength, right? And what did that do? It immediately it, reinforced it, that for you sure. Stronger. That's exactly it. It reinforces the fact that if I'm just stronger and faster and more aggressive, I'm gonna tap people out, right? And but now, what about the the counterpoint here, mm -hmm. which is that? Sometimes people go into a class, they're brand new, they're going to do jiu-jitsu. They research it online, they decided it's the best martial art for them. Sure. And they show up, and it's, it's a big free-for-all in the sense that it's all the belts. And that day, the instructor is teaching the inside-out, upside-down, yeah. backwards yeah. clock choke. Mm -hmm. And you don't know how to do an armbar from the guard. You don't know how to get out of mount. You don't know right, about right, posture right, from, right. The bottom yeah. of, mm -hmm. you know, from the bottom of side mount. Sure. Now you're learning these super advanced techniques when you probably shouldn't be learning, you know, there's not really a curriculum, but it's, it's generally understood that you should learn you know, posture from the bottom of mount before you should be learning the Barambolo, you know, right, advanced right. interest of the Barambolo. So the thing is, is that um, the, the, with, with how, do you, how do you do it? How do you convey the basic curriculum? The basic curriculum is based on principles, which, which permeate jujitsu, right? So if, I'm, if we're doing a choke, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the principle of the choke. You need to close off either both sides of the carotid arteries or you need to go and close off the trachea, right? And, and how you do that is irrelevant. You can do that with your forearms. You can do it like this, yeah. right? You, you know, uh, like Roadhouse Bundy. style. Yeah, Roadhouse. <laughs> I was going to say Ted Bundy, but, <laughs> but yeah, Patrick Swayze is way cooler, right? But you want to go and teach it with principles. And then, and then the, 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 the technique itself it's just a permutation of that principle. So as you're teaching the technique, what it needs to be infused with the principle. So it doesn't matter the spill, you know, like the the, 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 the the somersaulting upside down inverted lapel choke that you're about to teach. That's immaterial, right? What is key is the principle behind the choking. Why is it that it works and why is it that it feels effortless when you apply it? That's what you that's that's what you're trying to get across. Now, um, when 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 it comes to but you do have uh, beginners classes for well. sure, absolutely. And when when 
um, when we do a beginner's class, and, and what I encourage uh, 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 the other instructors in, in our schools to do when they teach a beginner's class is to basically answer the question, well, how would I get here, right? Because um, if, if, I was, if I was teaching like a bunch of advanced students, for instance, if, it's, if it was just like a random class and it was just a room full of like purple belts and brown belts, then we'll just start in deep half guard. Right, and I don't have to go and explicate. Well, how did we get here? What are the circumstances yeah. that, they, that they've arose been from? there? They, 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 they've, they've been, been here. Problem. They know the entry point. So I'm just going to go and I'm going to omit all of that preamble, and we're just going to talk about you know some really really cool sweeps or some uh, counters from yeah. deep half, right? However, um, in in a in a group class with uh, in a group class where there's a person over there who is learning how to tie their belt. They're fumbling with the knot on their belt. And then uh, uh, on the other corner is somebody who's been with me for 10 years, right? And you have everybody in between, right? Uh, all in the same room. Well, how do I keep person A uh, from, from being completely overwhelmed and feeling incompetent and stupid and then like tossing their belt aside and then leaving the school and never coming back? How do, I, how, how do I keep them happy? But at the same time, how do I keep the brown belt from being bored and just like looking at the clock to, in, 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 and waiting to see when, when the start. starts? Yeah, when does the open mass start exactly? So how do I keep them happy? Well, in a class of that nature, we create a parable. We create a storyline. We create a narrative by going like, okay, well, um, here I am. I'm on my back. Maybe the person took me down, right? Uh, the person on top, is standing and they engage with this posture. They're gonna go and uh, control my pant legs first. And as they do a, a cross knee slide, I'm gonna counter them. And I'm gonna counter them with the deep half, right? And here we are in this position, right? And so you've given the beginner a reference point for for sure, you know. uh, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and you're teaching at multiple levels, precisely. And and so perhaps the first part of the lesson could be for the newbie, right? Uh, uh, this, the, 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 uh, the next part of the lesson could be for the more intermediate practitioner for your blues, your purples. And then the last part of the lesson will be for the advanced uh, practitioner. And um, some in, it, when, you, when you provide a lesson of that nature, when it has three parts like that, um, there will be parts that are informational. They will help you like with your game right away. It's like, wow, that's exactly what I need. And, and some are inspirational, right? In the sense that it's like, wow, that's so cool. You know, maybe I can use that in six months. Maybe I can use that in a year. I remember mm -hmm. it, it, seeing the Uma Plata for the first time and just seeing like, what, what is that? And it's, it was crazy to me that you can shoulder lock somebody with your legs. And now it's one of my favorite moves. Right, but but I remember thinking it's like wow, I love to be able to do that. That's so cool, right? So some some techniques are informational stuff, and then some some are inspirational, right? And but the the the, the key thing is is that as a teacher, you're never going to be able to go, especially in a group class. You're never going to make everybody happy, right? That's impossible, and that's that's it's it's a foolish it is a foolish attempt to do so, right? Um, but, but you're gonna go and, and, and you're gonna, there's, there's out of a lesson, there's gonna be one little portion that's gonna appease that person over there, right? And of course, private lessons are completely different, right? You, you can go and design you know, the, the entire hour. Well, well, it's interesting that, I mean, my understanding, <laughs> mm -hmm. I was not learning jujitsu in Brazil in the 50s and 60s. Yeah, yeah. But my understanding is the way that jujitsu was taught back in the old days was that before you got on the mat yeah. and got to you know, train with the group, you would have to take a series of private lessons with one of their instructors, which did a couple of things, made sure that everybody was on the same page, but also made it very expensive. Yeah, yeah. And that's why all the good. old old yeah, school jiu-jitsu yeah. guys are basically white. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're yeah. white rich. They're, 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 they're the wealthy. Yeah, yeah the wealthy all the poor kids went and did, went and did yeah. capoeira. Yeah, 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 that, yeah exactly. That was judo. judo. Yeah, well, for sure, right? So I think it's changed now. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think it's just because it's just there's just more jujitsu out there. It's just it's proliferated, right? Yeah. But there's there's a, there is a good argument to making sure that the person knows how to tap at least. Absolutely, how to tap I, right. I couldn't I, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. And like um, and, and you want to make people feel comfortable. Like learning a, learning anything new is terrifying, mm -hmm. right? And and 
Um, and it should be, right? If you're not terrified, if you're not scared, if you're not anxious, you're probably not really learning anything new. Mm -hmm. It's just this probably a, just, just a different shade of something you're already familiar with, right? And uh, I think it's always very healthy, right, to learn something new, right? Um, but it is, it is scary. And I think that's one of the main reasons why somebody doesn't show up in my school, right? Um, so, uh, I mean, we do, we do a free private. And the, 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 the main reason is to make sure that the person feels comfortable, right? It's just them and another instructor. But as well, right, I think it's critical that they know what tapping out is. Mm -hmm. They know certain terms like the guard and, you know, you know like mount. Right. The back. Well, we just, we've been immersed in it. We assume that everybody knows. Which and is, and yeah. so many oh, newbies sure. do know because they've all yeah, been watching yeah, the UFC. Yeah. But you have seen it. Yeah. Not all of them. Exactly. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. for sure. There, I've, I've, there are still I've, people out there who've never watched MMA, have no I've, idea what tapping out in, is. In, in, exactly. Yeah. And, in, 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 you know what? It's so crazy because, yeah, exactly. You and I are immersed in it. We talk about, uh, we do jiu-jitsu every single day. We talk about jiu-jitsu all the time. And, you know, when you're so immersed in it, Right, it is just like you're almost shocked when somebody is like, "What? You don't know what you know? Reverse Del Hiva is? How you know? Who are you? And yeah. What country are you from?" And and the thing is, is that you know, um, um, a lot of people, like they they they, you just kind of want to do something new and different, mm -hmm. right? And I've had I've had some people this is over the years, you know, like I've had my own, you know, I've been teaching martial arts uh, since night like, she's 2004 professionally, right, and. I've had people come to my jujitsu class, like 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 backing up into a corner, right? Because somebody is trying to go and wrap yeah. their groin <laughs> around them, right? And and this is because they were like, no, 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 I want to punch it. They want they wanted to do the kickboxing class. Mm -hmm. They just didn't know that the kick that kicking and punching meant the kickboxing class. Yeah. They just didn't know. They thought, well, oh, jujitsu, great. I'll just let's do that. And they didn't realize that there's going to be people lying on top of them, yeah. right? So yeah. Um, um, you know, like it's, 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 you, uh, after a few of those incidences, you sort of understand that not everybody knows exactly what jujitsu is, right? And people find out things like, oh my God, I'm claustrophobic. Sure. You know, they, they, that's actually, mm -hmm. I've received a lot of, um, questions from on grapple arts about claustrophobia. And there's an article mm -hmm. that I ended up mm -hmm. co-writing because I don't suffer from claustrophobia. I'm pretty comfortable in, okay. in close spaces, but it's, you know, n after I started talking about it, I realized that quite a few jujitsu people yeah, have, have, have managed to overcome it. Yeah. I know some pro fighters, wow. like pro MMA wow. fighters, wow. who had severe claustrophobia issues and that have managed to mostly overcome it. And I mean, it gives special impetus to their escapes from bottom, which oh, is sure. probably a good thing sure. in, an MMA, sure. in an MMA context. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, they, they, they come to class and like, oh my God, you know, oh, this is part of this range here that we've never, ever been oh, at. For sure, for sure. And that, oh my God, that, that feeling, that, that, that moment where, there, where people are in a panic, everybody goes through it. Everybody. And that, no, a different, like, like, it could be triggered by claustrophobia. Yeah, or it could be triggered by being dominated by somebody. It, it, exactly, exactly, exactly. Somebody is just, it's just manhandling, they just can't deal with it. Right, uh, they're losing, or or um, um, they're applying all of their strength, and their strength is being nullified. And they just, they just, um, um, there's just this, this this anxiety, right? That occurs. It occurs um, um, in jujitsu. It occurs in boxing. You know, a lot of my students when they first start uh, sparring for the first time, instead of doing just pads, right? Um, Anything where there's this big ego check. Sure, uh, absolutely. There's that anxiety. There's that moment of panic, and um, it is a it is that it's a rite of passage mm -hmm. to embrace it, and then to um, I don't say I, I don't want to. I was going to say overcome it, but even to this day, right? I still get into fall into moments of panic. So what does that mean? What does that mean? It means that I've just been able to manage it better. Mm -hmm. Right, that's it. I still experience it, right? What's like that famous quote about the <laughs> the difference between a hero and a coward? Is the mm. coward feels fear, and the hero also feels fear, but yeah, but manages still, to keep on going. Yeah, exactly. Oh, exactly. And um, the the whole idea of uh, of dealing with that that anxiety, that fear, that that sense of panic. Um, I think that's 
when it comes to martial arts, you know, people talk about, especially some of the some of the, the books that I, I read when I was younger, and perhaps you probably read as well, they talked a lot about spirituality and martial arts. In my belief, there's the only inherent spirituality when, when it comes to martial arts is finding tranquility. When somebody's trying to punch you in the face, <laughs> or when, when some big sweaty dude is on top mount and, is tr and has their form in your neck, and you freaking out and panicking certainly isn't gonna help you. Mm -hmm. And you have to stay calm, just chill. And the pro the person will probably screw up. The pro the person will probably screw up and they'll give you a, a regard. They'll give you a sweet they'll give you a turnover. But there's and nothing, you know, whether they finish the thing or not, whether they finish that mm -hmm. choke or not mm -hmm. from the top against you, mm -hmm. the right the, there's still the right thing to do. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. And that kind of you know, what's, what's the uh, Alcoholics Anonymous prayer? God grant me the strength to change the things I can, mm. the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, and the wisdom to know the difference. You're kind of <laughs> applying that in jiu-jitsu. Like, I'm going to do everything I can do, sure, but certainly. I've got to accept the fact that sometimes it doesn't work. And it's funny, it's with this whole mm -hmm. spiritual mm -hmm. element, because... We all drank the Kool Aid growing up, like oh, he's a tenth, you know, he's eleventh degree oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Shaolin grandmaster. Oh, for sure. Therefore, he's got to be a moral person. Therefore, he's got to be somebody who's should be allowed near children. Therefore, he's got to yeah. be somebody oh, who absolutely. is a natural leader and has wisdom to impart. Yeah, 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 yeah. And even if the martial arts skill is there, let let's let's take for a moment, let's accept for a moment the, the premise that he actually does have skill to impart because a lot of these eleventh degree grandmasters. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's it's all smoke and mirrors, and they don't actually have any skills. But let's assume that for a moment that we have martial arts skills in the in the house. Right. It doesn't tell you anything about that person's oh for sure moral oh absolutely ability, absolutely the, 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 that, oh for sure and that's so true and that's so true and, so and it's not something that we we don't say you know he's a really really good car mechanic therefore. No, you can never it, molest it's, it's, a child, it's, right? It's, it's it, silly, it, for sure. Or he's a really, really good businessman. Therefore, I should listen to what he has to say about, you know... My marriage. Or my marriage, marriage right? Yeah, yeah, or how I should raise... Apples and oranges. Know, but for some reason, or, we conflate yeah. the two in martial arts. Yeah. No, no, it, it, it is really bizarre, but it, it's, it's amazing that... Um, I've always thought of myself as a rather critical thinker and whatnot, but how... Um, how I, especially when I was younger, I certainly rever I revered my... Uh, martial arts instructors and and I remember uh, I'm not going to mention his name but it's kind of a funny story I remember uh, uh, just just one of my um, uh, martial arts instructors that I just like I love this guy I thought he was amazing and just like one of the smartest people I ever met in my life and just an amazing amazing martial artist and I remember us becoming like pretty good friends and whatnot and we were just walking down the street and we were just trying and he farted he farted like like <laughs> <laughs> and like and like and like <laughs> I was like oh my god like and it was just a ball and then he was just like oh excuse me and he just kept on going he just kept on walking and and then there was a part of me that was just like he's he's just a dude he's just like a regular he's just a guy just a bit further down the road than you were that's exactly it in martial arts that's it like yeah. he's not cut from a different cloth and how um. It, it, in, in, in how important that is, right? <laughs> like, it is, and, and like, for, for, for me, like, um, when I'm with my students and what I, I, I talk about, I talk about my failures as well. I talk about how, like, I, I remember, I said this a couple of different times in a couple of different ways in my group classes where uh, uh, maybe, like, sometimes when I'm closing up the lesson and whatnot, um, I'll say something like, I've tapped more than anybody else in this room, like more than any of you can possibly imagine. And that's the reason why I'm sitting in the center of the room talking, right? right? It's, it's, it's about the process because you see people who... Well, that, that comes from a position of emotional strength on your part because you're, sure. you're mature enough to not be threatened. There's, there's no myth to maintain that Richie Yip has never, ever tapped. Of course, this is yeah. silly. Right. But, but that is a myth that a lot of these... 11th degree oh, grandmaster. Sure. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Great. One of my favorite stories, mm -hmm. and I've told it before, is I was on a trip once uh, by bus, and there was an hour layover or a two hour layover in a city. So I went for a walk, and there was a big kickboxing school uh, pretty close to the bus station. Oh, I'll go visit, and I go downstairs, and there are all these signs, you know, like, a man who conquers himself can conquer the universe, or 
the, 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 the essence of martial arts is self-discipline, and self-discipline mm -hmm. is the essence of progress, or, or all these inspirational things, sure, things sure, that should sure. be on a poster with, you know, the sun coming through the clouds. <laughs> and there's the owner of the school on the phone behind the desk going, what do you mean? <laughs> The, the, the effing t-shirts are effing ready today. You're a complete a-hole. I can't effing believe you're ruining my life. He's losing it. He's completely, absolutely yeah. losing it. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, like, all the propaganda on the walls there uh, to... Um, oh, yeah. It's to convince parents oh, to let sure. this man be in charge of their children, which is essentially what we're talking about. He made his... I'm sure he made his bread and butter. His bread and butter was teaching kids. I mean, there, honestly, there's quite a few martial arts instructors... Who shouldn't be allowed within a hundred yards of a child. Oh, leave alone, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Leave alone for sure. Teach them how to be essentially teach them how to be men or teach them how to be uh, adults. Oh, for sure. And, and this, you know, like it's 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 really easy just to go and get some pictures or get some posters, frame them up, hang them all. It's really easy to do, right? Um, Develop some proficiency with Photoshop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's exactly. me getting my black belt from uh, <laughs> Barack Obama or something, you know? Like something, <laughs> something absurd. But, you know, Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan. <laughs> 12 degree archery. Uh, <laughs> yeah, horseback yeah. Riding backwards on horseback. Um, but, you, you know, is, but you know what is, um, I think is, 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 is evidence that's really difficult. To, to, to fake is to um, have a school where um, um, there's um, people who have been with you for 10 years, like brown belts and, and purple belts and, you know, white belts who just started and you walk into the school and maybe you, you know, you, 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 you take a couple of free classes or whatever, you maybe just watch a class. You get a sense that, of the school. Get a sense of the school and you feel, you, get a sense that you, you actually feel the vibe yeah. of the school. People chatting, I think is huge. Yeah. Right, people just chit chatting and just hanging out and you, you know just just talking and whatnot, right? Because and all that stuff comes from the top down. I, I the guy so. at the top is a complete a hole. And it's other people, tough. other Absolutely. people will model off that. Absolutely, and, right? And, and that, that is normal that way. is like unless they're all paid actors, like it's going to be pretty tough to fake, yeah. right? Like to have a really strong, rich school environment where a student the students have been, you know. There in the school with the with the with the instructor for you know a decade or close to a decade you know new students everybody from in between right uh, all different shapes and sizes you know men women you know like I, I think that is a is 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 a more more of a, a true indicator for yeah. for for the style of leadership that exists and you know the thing is, is you know, that being said every school has a problem student or a black sheep oh, student. but if every single dude there. Is you know some cranked out roided oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. guy with you the, know, two pit bulls on chains. Right. You know that's you know don't be surprised if that's oh for sure that, oh absolutely and you know the thing is is that this is this is this is more to the reason why uh, having a, 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 a group class where there's diverse belt levels mm. is really important because the um, uh, current students kind of showcase uh, 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 how to behave mm -hmm. to the new students. Right? It's one like, thing to be told how to do it. It's another thing to observe. Oh, how I, I, absolutely, argue. absolutely. And if I do it, it's, it almost seems like I, I seem like I sound like a nag, mm -hmm. right, or whatever. I got a guy just wagging their finger and stuff, right? But if if you're a, if you're a new student, if you're a, a brand a brand new student and you see everybody like helping out to clean the mats at the end of class. It's like, you don't want to be the guy who's like, thanks, and just walks into the change room, right? You, oh, well, okay, well, I want to, you know, I'm going to go and I'm, it's like you're at a dinner party, mm -hmm. right? Well, as everybody is helping to, you know, put away the dishes and to, to, to clean up and whatnot, you don't want to be the person smoking a cigar at the, or on the couch, mm -hmm. right? As everybody's working away, you want to go and it's like, oh, wow, everybody else is helping out. And so as a new student comes in, all the previous students, like the, the senior students, when the, the 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 new student sees like the highest ranking, you know, like the instructor cleaning up and the, the highest ranking belts cleaning up as well, it's like, well, I'll, I'll participate. And then and then and then that's how the, the, the community grows, you know, and it's crazy, you know, like I've always been really blessed. I've always been a part of really, really great schools and communities and, and it's one of my it's it's my number one thing is to maintain the the uh, the, 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 the sense of culture, mm -hmm. right? The, the warmth that's in the school. That's to me is is everything. And 
It's amazing how many instructors are willing to put up with mm-hmm. the problem guy. You know, the, the, yeah. the guy who cranks beginners. The guy who, yeah, 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 yeah. who opens his gi up and presses his sweaty, yeah, chest yeah. hair filled yeah. man boob into somebody's <laughs> face. Because, oh well, he's paying his dues, so he's got, a, or, you know, the the obvious criminal. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I mean, anyone I mean, want to buy a... For sure. It, 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 that's, a, that's a leadership problem. Like, that's, that comes down to the head instructor, right? So, um, But it's, it's a false... My point mm-hmm. is it's a false um, equ- math that they're doing. They're saying, well, I can't lose this one person paying dues. That one person paying dues is costing you exactly. five, six, well, ten, yeah, twenty... Absolutely. Seriously, it goes, this is jiu-jitsu? Screw this. Yeah. I got yeah, ring yeah, work versus, four times in a week? Yeah, precisely. Yeah. It's, right. Yeah, yeah I'm already gone. Here. Yeah, I know, and it's it's uh, short sightedness on, on on the part of the school school owner. There's no question, um, but it's uh, it's it's it takes a lot of leadership. It takes skill. I mean, those those, those talks are never fun, mm-hmm. right? When you have uh, you know a student with an attitudinal problem or whatever, those those talks are never fun. But you have to do it because. Um, you know, like ultimately, uh, human beings, we will all judge other people, right? It's, it's, it's an inherent trait that we all have. We all judge people. And I know that my students will judge me. And if I don't do something about it, that means I'm condoning it, mm-hmm. right? If I'm just like, hmm, I see it and I don't do anything about it, that means I'm condoning it, right? And not that I make a, make, make a big show, right? Where I line the students up and, and I would never do that in a million years. But... I'll just go and, you know, very quietly just pull the person aside and just have a little, you know, like quick little chat and about their behavior and whatever. And, you know, they, they, and if they, they, they choose to change, great. And if they don't, they can leave the school and that's totally fine or whatever, right? But um, I'm making an effort mm-hmm. nonetheless, right? I'm making an effort. And it's, it's, it's a key thing. And um, it's the invisible hand guiding the culture of the school. That's well, well, in, or- in, in that sense, in, 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 dealing with yeah, the problems, in, in, yes, and, the in, in visible, and the visible hand. In, in that sense, but, but largely you can argue that the invisible hand is the, um, the is exactly is is the sort of like the uh, so that, that that's sort of like the uh, uh, I don't know what I was gonna say pressure, but like we all want to fit in, yeah. right? We all want other people to like us. This is very tribal, mm-hmm. right? We want to be a part of this community. We want to be a part of this little tribe, right? That is our martial arts school, and. And we want the other students to like us and want to train with us, right? And um, I think that's a, I think it's a critical, uh, I think it's a critical thing. But you know, like, for, furthermore, uh, like when, um, it, when it when it comes to um, helping students, it's a part of, or part of me with like, I'm, 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 I'm skipping over my thoughts here, Stefan. Um, when it comes to having a, a mixed, and diverse group. Right, white belts training with higher belts. Um, you want higher belts to like jujitsu and like helping the junior belts, right? Uh, you want them to help them uh, feel that 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 uh, that ju- that they can do this. Yes, jujitsu is hard. It gets really hard, right? Like the most basic technique, like basic, like like what's a basic technique? Like guillotine choke, a uh, uh, triangle choke has minimum, even if you were to do a dead raw, like, or close to dead, like, like sloppy, three moves, three components. Here's a sloppy guillotine. It has, like, three components. I mean, what's a jab? Oh, like, straight out and back. You know, like, it's pretty simple. But, like, jiu-jitsu is always going to be more complicated than striking. Yeah. Right? And it's, and, it's, and it's always daunting, and especially when you start... I wrote a blog like, article once called, you know, uh, I think another reason why jiu-jitsu... Or BJJ is better than boxing. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love oh, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. That's the, awesome. That's a great title. Media. Great title, right? Yeah. And the thing but is, it, that was the central premise. Yeah, it's more sophisticated. Yeah. Right? In boxing, you might have matched leads or unmatched leads. Mm-hmm. And that's about, you know, the guy might have his hands up or his hands down. For that's sure. four permutations. Yeah. In jiu-jitsu, we're talking six basic positions at least. Oh, minimal. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. ten, depending yeah, yeah. on how you count them. And you can be top or bottom. For sure. You'd be left or right on most of them. Oh, for sure. And so out, of, you, out of all of those, each position has so many different variations. Yeah. Right? Boxing, you got how many punches? You got your yeah, jab, your yeah, cross, yeah, your body yeah, hook, yeah. your high hook, your overhand, it's, your uppercut. Now we're running out of punch. Oh, for sure. So somebody with a striking background who were able to, like, like, like boxing, six months, you're doing pretty well. You're, 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 you're probably pretty good. You're looking pretty sharp, right? 
jujitsu six months in, you still, you probably feel like, what, what am I doing? Right? You probably get a gist of it at that stage. You're starting to have a general understanding of it. You're at least on the beginning to understand what you're doing wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, exactly. Exactly. Right? But it's still going to be tough. But that's when the seniors come in. Yeah. And they go, you know what? I was in your ex- the exact same position like last year or two years ago. Yeah. And the, the key thing is just to stick with it yeah. and you'll be fine. Where it comes from, for me, it's kind of... You know, like you're school. overqualified. To I, well, that well, 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 you know, yeah, because the experience for me was, you know, in '97. You know, it was tough. You know, and and also, there's a there's a financial motivation for sure. me. You know, of course, I want to stick. You know, have you stick around? You know, like you're paying me, right? Yeah. So, but when it comes from one of the, uh, uh, is there ever a reason that I should quit jujitsu? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no I don't know. <laughs> okay, I think I want right, but. It just it's just more you know when it comes from like, like uh, words of motivation when it comes from somebody who is maybe six months yeah. a year two years down the road from you yeah. it's more genuine it feels more sincere right yeah. and everybody I truly believe that you know in a, in a tribe which is like our school right everybody contributes right so as the as the higher belts will contribute to the junior belts by, you know, encur- offering words of encouragement, by, you know, helping them out, by encouraging them, right? Uh, um, um, you, uh, helping them out as they learn the technique, maybe um, helping them to, to uh, just maybe summarizing some of the points, like during the, you know, I would do a demonstration, great. The demonstration has like, here's 18 details on how to do this guard pass, you know? It's impossible for you to remember all of them. It's impossible. However, sometimes what I'll say is, your training partner will help you remember the techniques or the the the, the, um, uh, the components of the technique that you may have forgotten. So for sure, I'll forget something. You'll forget something. I'll remember a few things. You'll remember a few. Th- Together, yeah. we'll remember it all. Yeah. Right. So it becomes a team-oriented activity, yeah. which is critical for jujitsu because I can't learn it by myself. Yeah. Right. Like I've I've tried to make my own grappling dummy when I was younger. <laughs> you know, didn't really work too well. Right. You need a training partner. Right, and the uh, um, um, higher belts will help uh, some of the junior belts uh, uh, to remember some of the some of the finer aspects of the technique. Right, and the junior belt will do the same. Right, it's like, oh, how about this? Right, which is which is which is great. But you know, everybody contributes, Stefan. And with the white belts, where the white belts contribute as training partners, and what I mean by that, not just as a an arm or a neck. For the other person to go and tap out into exercise, as critical as that is, as endearing as that is, right? Because there, there, there's so much trust that happens in a jiu-jitsu class, right? Which is, and, that, and that's fantastic. But if you're, le- if you're, if you're a white, if you're, if you're a blue belt, and you want to work on a new uh, triangle choke entry, right? Are you gonna go and pick a 200 pound purple belt yeah, exactly. to work? No. During rolling, it's just like okay. I'm going to pick like a smaller white belt to work this on. If this right? brand new technique, try it on the lightest, whitest for sure. belt for first. Sure. And then when you nail it on them, then you start moving up the food uh, chain. Ab- absolutely. Absolutely. Right? I do and, that. You do oh, that. Oh, I do that all the time. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. I do that when I'm working a new technique or, or a new setup or just a little subtlety. Because uh, if I've got some great technique that I think I'm going to be able to pull on you, if I go try it on you for the first time that I've ever done it, I think this is, this is worth elaborating on. Mm-hmm. If I've got some new technique mm-hmm. that I think is the Richie Yip uh, kryptonite, the yeah. Richie Yip, um, you know, the silver bullet. Sure. If I go try it on you without having dialed it in on somebody else, you're going to see it coming a mile away because I'm going to be slow and clumsy and it's not going to be honed. Right. And it's probably not going to work. And I'm going to ah, stupid technique. Right. You'll, you'll find it's you know it'll be discouraging, right. and you'll dismiss it. And you'll never be able to build that aspect of your game. So I need to start dialing that in mm-hmm. with the lightest, whitest belt. Absolutely, and absolutely. When I can nail that guy with it on a fairly regular basis, then I go a little bit heavier, a little Upgrade. bit more skilled. For, for sure, it's 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 progressive. Yeah. For sure, there's no question. People right. screw that up all the time. That they oh I know this because <laughs> they're always. Fighting one particular, there's always one guy or two guys in class who they're. Oh always sure, fighting. sure, sure, sure. It's 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 like, it's like there's always somebody. It's, it you know what? So it, it's it's so funny, but there's just uh, it's just the style, hey, or the it's not so much that you can't quantify it. It's not so much like body. It's like, oh, I really I have a really hard time with like super tall guys or like super short guys. 
for me, I don't know what it is with you, for, for you, but like for me, it's just a person. It's just the way they move. It's just how they, their, their, their style of jujitsu. It doesn't even have to be their belt. Right, and there's I have blue belts that are just like man, I just have a terrible time. I don't know what, what if they get their position, the one yeah, that they're good at. Yeah, they're, they're in animals, mm-hmm. right? And sometimes it's just their how they do jujitsu, right? And um, which is fantastic. And once again, that's what makes a rich training environment, right? It's all these diverse belts, all these diverse uh, people. Even if and and I say this to my students all the time, and even if we found somebody who was the exact same height, weight, body composition, you know, like, like cultural background, like everything, right? Like, like uh, they would move differently than me. They would do differently. They would have uh, idiosyncrasies that were, that were their own, right? And, and um, this is the reason why we need to train with as many different people as possible. Right? Now, tell me what you think about this. Something mm-hmm. that I've noticed is there's always that guy at the school, mm-hmm. white belt or blue belt, and all he wants to ever do is train with the most advanced guys. So he's always going to to fight the brown belts and black belts. And he's always yeah and it, it, yeah yeah I know what you mean. And I think it's actually a, a limiting thing because yes, occasionally you should get mm-hmm. you should go against somebody who's much better than you. And yes, there's a reasons to go against people who are just starting out. Let's assume you're in your let's assume you're a high blue belt. Sure, sure, sure. But I like what Daniel Asanto said, which is that most of the time, your fastest progress comes from people who are just a little bit, from training against people who are just a little bit better than you, or a little bit worse than you. So that you're oh, being, interesting. that you're being pushed. Of course there are reasons to go outside that envelope. We're just talking mm-hmm. about where should you spend, you know, 60% of your training Absolutely. time. Yeah. So always, <laughs> if you're always just hunting for like the blackest black belt in the room, and that's the only guy you ever want to fight, all you're really going to get good at is defense. Yeah, you're, you're never going to learn to get your yeah, own. That's that's your great. And, and similarly, if you're only ever going for white belts because maybe your ego can't handle not having your way, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. and so that you become the designated white that's belt. That's a problem too in a lot of schools too. There's there's yeah yeah. As, as, as there's, but then your only your offense ever gets developed. Yeah, and you, you nobody ever puts you C- on your back. C- certainly, nobody ever sure. puts you on the bottom. Mm-hmm. You're and you end up getting you know like guys who are like. Yeah, I'm a blue belt, but I'm a brown belt in defense. Well, you know, good for you. You know, yeah, you know yeah, nobody's yeah, ever yeah. defensed their way to yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah, uh, exactly. Oh, for sure. You know, and it's a. I good was in a street fight, and they, you know, <laughs> pulled the bottom side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he couldn't yeah, tap yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Oh well. Yeah, yeah. Good, good, for, good you. for you. Good for you. Absolutely. And you know, it, it's it's so silly because people go like, oh, self defense. I'm great at defense. I'm just and like jujitsu is great for that because you can't tap me out, right? It's self defense. And it's like, well, yeah, it, it's, it's such a, yeah, and, and it really should be self-offense yeah. or self-counter-offense. It's really what it should be, you know, because you want to be more proactive, right? right. But absolutely, there's, there's, there are uh, uh, practitioners who are, you know, uh, uh, they're just hunting for the, the, the colored belts, mm-hmm. right? It's like, oh, oh, like, like the open master, oh, can we roll? <laughs> Especially, and their favorite target is the newly promoted Purple belt, the newly oh, promoted yeah. brown belt. Yeah, yeah. They should give you a giant freaking yeah. bullseye to go on the back of your gi oh, for, for the sure. first three months when you get your promotion. Because yeah. every lower belt has <laughs> got you in this. Oh, for sure. Must it's, have it's, myself a brown belt. You know, uh, like you know, like I'm always, I'm all about you know, like 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 you know, I want my I want my students to be uh, assertive, right? And and I want them to 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 uh, um, uh, have an uh, like a. a an attack prone guard. I want them to pass guard. You know, like I want them to to be a, have a very offensive game and whatnot. But I'm always worried about people like having like full on death matches. Sure. You know, and and you know it's unsafe. It's also unsafe to have people on the mat and whatever. And I think it's it's, it's kind of productive and whatever. And so I'm always you know as I'm rolling, I also have like one eye on my opponent, my my training partner, and I also have another eye. Mad, as right? a teacher, you have to. You have to be aware of your and, and, and your yeah, class yeah, 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 and and uh, um, and I do my very best to 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 uh, uh, balance both out. And I'm always weary about it's it's like the um, the really high white belt versus the newly appointed blue belt, mm. right? Like, because the white belt is like really trying to get their blue belt, yeah. and then the blue belt is really trying to defend the to defend the exactly, or you know. 
The I honor of the versus, school oh, yeah. and the honor of jiu-jitsu. <laughs> yeah. All in one. All, all in, in one. one. Absolutely. And those are the top. And even 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 for 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 myself, right? Like it is like it is the uh, really tough brown belt, you know, who is you know, you know like a few months away from their black belt that it is just like, oh, look at this is gonna be a taunt fight. Oh man, you know? <laughs> And, 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 uh, which is, you know, it's, it's great. It's just the way it is. But, you know, like, um, you know, like running a school and making sure that people aren't going to go freaking nuts. Like it's like gold medal match at Abu Dhabi, you know, and, you know, and making sure that everybody stays safe. Right. Mm-hmm. I want my, I want my students to be assertive. Right. I want them to be, I have, I have a very attack prone game, but I want them to be doing jujitsu. Mm-hmm. Right. I want them to be doing jujitsu. It, it, it's, it's not like, okay, let's see if we can pass guard by headbutting one another. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Will this work? Oh, no, how about this? <laughs> you know, so, uh, uh, you know, I always want to be trying, try, I try to be mindful of, of that kind of stuff. And, you know, and, uh, we'll leave the eye gouging to John Jones. and. Oh, like yeah. That. Oh, yeah. Have you ever been poked in the eye? Oh, Did yeah. You you? Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's awful. I mean, I'm sure it is. <laughs> no, that's, that's one of the reasons. It's very, very effective. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I Damn, it's it for no need to field test that one, hey? I wonder if this eye poke works. Um, <laughs> you were talking about grappling dummies earlier, back uh-huh. when I was uh, mainly training in Kajukembo. Mm-hmm. I thought about building, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I should admit this publicly. What's this? You know those styrofoam mannequin heads? I was like, what if I hollow out the eye and then <laughs> take, like, eggs? I'll put an egg in each eye, and then I'll practice brilliant. poking it. <laughs> Let's just make this condition real myself. as possible. Yeah, with eggs. <laughs> I never actually did do it. Maybe I should do it for a YouTube video. That'd be pretty That'd funny. be hilarious. That'd be but, awesome. Uh, That'd be yeah. awesome. Back when I was an aspiring urban combatant. <laughs> but yes, yeah, I've been eye gouged. Eye yeah, well, gouged is the wrong word. I poked. Sure. And it, it's, uh, you see why it's so much part of the curriculum of you know, it, it doesn't really matter how tough you are. If you get hit in the eye. Oh, for, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, one of my, one of my students asked me, like, he, was, he, he got poked in the eye or whatever, and, uh, um, and he asked me, and it's just like, well, how do you prevent that? And then I'm like, and the first thing that went through my mind is like, it's never happened to me. Mm-hmm. Like, I, it's weird. Like I, uh, like, I don't think so. Like, I, I think I would remember something like that, but it's never happened to me. And, and he was like, how do I prevent something like that? And I'm like, I don't. No, I don't know how you would. I th- it's never really happened. It's just, you, you, like, like what am I? What am I? What are my students like? Uh, like, like he was passing my guard and he literally smashed his face, not his face, side of his head on my knee. And he's like, oh, I had to stop, right? And my so my point is is that he finished you off by slamming his head into your knee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And how brutal it was. And you know, at the end of the day, we're not playing badminton. Right, so no, well, I mean, small injuries and you know, what is it? It's it's to, to paraphrase it, Dr. Seuss, you know, what's it? Bang ups and hang ups can happen to you. Yeah. That, uh, and, and, and and they will. And then they will. And I am super paranoid about getting hurt. Like I'm, and I'm super paranoid about my students getting hurt. And anybody that's been to a single lesson of mine, uh, or any uh, single group class, like I, 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 every single lesson is just rife with with safety components and you know like just be careful of this and watch out for that and whatever right and um and i i think it's critical for the group class i think it's critical for the environment of the class because we want everybody to understand how to keep everybody safe and if you've got a strong enough culture in your Mm -hmm. school which is kind of what we were talking about earlier Uh then if you and i are training and i end up we end up cranking my arm and i'm out of i can't train for a month i'll be pissed off that I can't train for a month, but I won't hold you personally responsible because yes, I don't yes, yes, believe yes, yes. that you did it maliciously. Right. And I think that's a key point, right? Because, um, it is, it is, it is, it is the intention, yeah. right? Because, um, um, I can call you a jerk or whatever, right? But if it's, if it's done in a jovial sort of a manner or sure. whatever, or it's just, it's just, it's just in, in passing in a, in a statement or a conversation or whatever, it's, it's all in the delivery. It's all in the, exactly. If, but if my intent was to go and scar you emotionally, then I owe you an apology, yeah. right? Especially if I want this friendship to continue, yeah. right? And uh, the, the same thing uh, when it comes to jiu-jitsu. If my intent, if my intent was to, I don't care, but your arm, either you're going to tap or your arm is going to shatter, mm-hmm. right? If that was the intent, then there's something wrong. Sure. If, if something happened, right? Like it was just ill-timed, if... 
um, um, I landed on it or whatever. We, we, uh, uh, my elbow grazed your eyebrow, whatever. Right. And you got cut, you know, which, 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 which happens. Um, it is, it is, it is the intent that I'm worried about as an, as an instructor. That is the main thing. It is the motivation, yeah. right? If it was malicious, then we have a problem, yeah. right? Um, furthermore, if the injury occurs, if an injury occurs, like, and, 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 and you know, it's just the, the, the uh, uh, reflexive apology is going to happen, right? Hopefully, right? Yeah. But it's like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Well, the, but an apology has three components. First thing is, is like to actually say, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Like sincerely speak it, you know, state it to the person's eyes. Uh, I'm sorry. That's the first thing. Second thing is, understand what had occurred so that so so that way you understand why the apology was necessary right it's just like oh man i'm sorry it's just like i, I, I lost my balance like passing your guard i don't know how that happened maybe my timing was a little bit off or you know i i just i just you know I didn't realize my, that your fingers were caught in my gear yeah yeah, yeah 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 exactly so you know like uh say so you're sorry understand the reason why you're saying your story and then make it right. Mm -hmm. And this, this is not just in jujitsu, but it's like if, sure. if if I borrowed your car and I and I scratched the bumper, right? It is just like I'm sorry, I scratched your car. Uh, I was uh, I was uh, drunk. I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I was I was high on cocaine. I hadn't slept on three days, <laughs> you know. And 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 um, I scratched your car. And then I'll make it right. I'll go and I'll make sure that the bumper is repaired and it'll be perfect. It'll be seamless. Now with an injury. This is like, you know, lose your eyebrow was cut. I mean, but I can go and I can, okay, let's get the first aid kit. I can get you gauze. You know, I can go and, you know, call Richie over. I can um, um, get you ice if I, you know. Uh, I'll drive you to the hospital. I can drive you to the hospital. Absolutely. I can call you a cab. I can do, I can do, I can follow up and see, yeah. see how, you, how you're doing the next day. I can, I, you know. These things will go and make it so that way, one, our friendship continues, the fact that we can still train jujitsu together, right? If that, that, that continues, because I value you as a training partner. And furthermore, what I'm concerned about is that if the next time we train, I don't want to make it so that way you smash out my eyebrow. Yeah, exactly. Right? And as a teacher, that's what I'm worried about. It's the escalation. Right. Right, and I've seen it, you know, in in other schools that I've trained in and whatnot, where things get a little like you get me, I get you, and it just starts to escalate, or people get hurt, or it's just, you know, next round, next time they train, it's like, oh, I'm gonna get you, mm -hmm. right? And, um, you know, luckily, luckily, I've only, I've only, uh, um, I've seen schools people. that encourage that because they Which think is it's insane, man. Yeah, yeah. And, well, and I've heard of that. You know, like, but it, but they, I think the the thing is that what it makes gonna make them tougher. I'll have, and ultimately. I'll have better, I'll have tougher students, and I'll have a better competition team. Is really what I think most of it comes down to. So it's ego on the part of the instructor. Yeah. Once again. Yeah. Possibly. And right. also attracting that kind of. I mean, some people do like to, you know, they like to bang. It's, you see this in kickboxing all the time. Like, <laughs> let's start light. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go light. Yeah, yeah the let's go light guy. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I think jujitsu is so difficult. And it, and, it, and it really, really is, you know, like, uh, and even, even though like my, the marketing that we do for the schools and stuff like that says like, you know, beginner programs and, you know, learn, 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 you know, jujitsu and, you know, six weeks, you know, like six week beginner program or, you know, whatever. And that's like, true. But you can have an understanding yes. of the principles. You can sort of like grasp yeah. them. You're not going to master them. You're not going to be able to go and uh, uh, exercise them yeah. within six. You have a the, vocabulary, but right, right, you're right, not right. absolutely be crafting sure. poetry just quite yet. Exactly, exactly. You have a vocabulary. Precisely, that's a great analogy, Stefan. And um, the, I think I think you see it's so difficult, and it's such a long, hard road. You know, like with everything from injuries to you know just just. Um, um, it's just tough to learn the volume right? of stuff that you need to learn. Oh, yeah, the volume of stuff that, that you need to learn, and and uh, and how it is a hundred percent inconvenient to go and train. You know, like even for me, even for me, right? Like I am, I am all day. I'm surrounded. Literally, I'm surrounded by training partners. At any moment, I can go and go. Hey, you want to train? Like I've, I've, I have my fellow students or my fellow, or my other instructors around me all day long, and it's still a hundred percent. It, like, like it's, it's, it takes up so much of my time and my energy to go and train. It's so inconvenient. And uh, to, to, to notch off time, 
for me to go and train or for anybody to go and train to go and like uh, uh, no I'm not gonna go and 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 I'm gonna miss American Idol tonight. I'm gonna exactly <laughs> right instead of watching The Bachelorette I'm gonna go and and train jujitsu right that's tough that it really really is and I think for me the reason one of the main reasons why I've just stuck to jujitsu for so long is because I've had amazing training partners right that not only do I have amazing training partners like yourself. But also, um, I love my students. Like I genuinely do. Like I love. Like like I I, I think they're like I hang out with my students. We you know we watch fights together. It's it's um, I, I I genuinely love teaching, right? And I you know and I've discussed it. Like I I love teaching to a fault, mm -hmm. right? Where I I probably teach more than I should. I should probably focus more on the business end of of managing and directing the schools and whatnot. But I love teaching. I love the people that are in my classes, right? And and I and, and when you love your training partners, you love your you truly feel like you're a part of this amazing community. Um, then it will it'll help you adhere to 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 jitsu, which is such a you know uh, such a, uh, a a daunting activity, but uh, it rewards you. It, it rewards you. For, certainly for myself, I can speak from my experience how. Um, um, it is. It's. It's just the uh, uh, the most over delivering th experience. Almost the most over delivering uh, thing I've ever done. In the sense that it's okay. given me a, a, a not not only an amazing hobby, but just just giving me purpose. And nothing nothing makes me feel more full and complete than than teaching. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, and great friends. You know, like you know, okay. like yourself and whatnot. And and and, and a great business and a way of life. Well, I, I think we've come full circle now. We started talking about you, and then we started talking about beginners, and now we're back to you. So, <laughs> yeah, that's I think, yeah, I don't think, uh, I don't think we can end it on a better note. That's um, if people want to track you down, how do they do it? Um, um, through the website is the best way. Uh, if you're in the uh, Vancouver or Burnaby area, if you're, you live in the uh, uh, Lower Mainland, uh, infighting.ca, I-N-F-I-G-H-T-I-N-G, infighting.ca. Uh, that's the best way to check us out. And, and, and if they're not, they should still check out your YouTube channel. They've oh, got a lot sure. of good stuff there. Oh, thank you so much. Oh. Yeah, Infighting MMA is our YouTube channel. And uh, hundreds of videos, uh, uh, jiu-jitsu, uh, gi, no gi, uh, lots of uh, kickboxing. kickboxing stuff as well. Right? So all of your MMA needs, uh, check out our, our YouTube channel. Thanks, Stefan. Well, thank you very much for awesome. uh, the nice chat today. Yeah. Yeah. Right on, uh, yeah. we'll, uh, cool. we'll be back tomorrow with another installment <laughs> of me. <laughs> <laughs> right awesome. Cool.